Hey dudes, and welcome back to The Bants. As always, I am your host, The Bants. And here we are, another Friday, another end of the week. So you know what that means. It's time for our second What's Happening in Fashion for the week. So let's just get right into it. And first up, as always, we have our headlines for the day. And in our first headline of the day, Forbes just released their list of world's largest public companies. And as far as apparel retail goes, you might be surprised who's on top. So a little while back, we did talk about brand finances, most valuable apparel brands, and there were some pretty heavy hitters on the top of the list there, such as Nike, H&M, and Zara, Adidas, and even in the luxury sector, we saw Hermes. So I'm sure you're thinking that probably one of those brands is at the top of this list in apparel, right? Well, although some of these brands do cut it close, they're by far no means at the top. No, actually, the largest apparel retail company in the world, far and above everybody else, is Christian Dior. Now, just to give you an idea of how far ahead they are in number one, we have to take a look at number two, which is, of course, Nike, which last year had $35 billion in sales, which is double that of the number three position, which is the Kirin conglomerate, which consists of brands like Gucci, Yves Saint Laurent, Alexander McQueen, you know, a lot of brands along those lines. So if Kirin was in number three with just under $18 billion, and Nike was in second with $35 billion, surely Christian Dior couldn't have been that much higher, right? Well, how does just under $50 billion in sales sound? Yes, we're talking almost one and a half times second place, which once again is Nike we're talking about here. And I really do have to say that this is super surprising to me. I had no idea Christian Dior was this high in the revenue list. I mean, yes, of course, it's a big company. But to beat out all those other companies, I mean, to beat out the Kering conglomerate, to beat out Adidas, to beat out Nike, that's fucking crazy. So all I really gotta say to this is now that there's some new people behind the designs at Christian Dior, I'm whether to see how much this does or doesn't change in the next couple of years. Then in our second headline of the day, let's talk about the supreme collaboration fraud that just happened in China. Now a little while back, some videos surfaced online of a small Chinese brand called OXN signing a collaboration deal with the president of Supreme. Funny thing is, the president of Supreme in this video is, of course, not James Jebbia, and actually has no ties to Supreme whatsoever. So, what actually happened then? Well, turns out the company OXN hired this random individual to act as the president of Supreme and orchestrated this huge collaborative signing that really got a lot of attention all over the internet and especially here in the states. Now why did this happen? I mean we really can't know for sure but if I had to take an educated guess it's probably just an attempt for this brand OXN to get as much publicity as they can, as many eyes as they can on their brand, especially in China where Supreme is huge along with a lot of these other faux luxury streetwear brands. So all I really gotta say to this is just kind of props to this company because it is one thing to go out there and just copy an idea or a t-shirt and mass produce thousands of it, but to copy a company's president and a collaboration signing, now that that takes some serious fucking balls. Okay, and with that, let's move on to our art stories for the day. And first up, artist Brendan Moreau showed off some of his new pieces, and honestly, I just love them for how simple they are. Even for as minimalistic as they feel, the patterns give them a lot of just vitality and 
honestly if you're a fan of once again patterns and as i said before minimalism definitely check these out then high snobiety did a quick little interview slash overview of takashi murakami's newest exhibit the octopus eats its own leg now wrapped up in new york city and making its final stop in fort worth texas so if you want to see a little bit more in depth on this than the photos we've seen before i definitely check this out and lastly hennessy showed off its newest VS limited edition bottle collaboration with artist Vils, who I am super excited for. He's done some really amazing work in the past, most of which we've covered on this channel. So if you're interested in his artwork and want something a little bit on the cheaper side, which is still technically usable, definitely look into this as well. Alright, now moving back into our fashion section for the day. First up, we get to see the first drop from the Montclair Genius collaborations, starting off with Hiroshi Fujiwara, and honestly, I'm a little bit mixed on it. Now when we first talked about the Montclair Genius collaborations, I did mention how excited I was for just the amount of different designers they had in this project, ranging across all different spectrums of fashion. And I did also voice my concern for the two streetwear collaborators, that being Hiroshi, of course, and Palm Angeles, for having some what I considered at the time lackluster designs. And unfortunately, looking at these designs, it kind of seems like my concerns came to fruition. Now, don't get me wrong here, I do think the majority of the designs here are actually fairly solid, albeit insanely overpriced although this is Montclair we're talking about here and even though of course these pieces are definitely minimalistic compared to the standards of what else we're seeing out of the Montclair Genius collaborations I would even consider these pieces a little bit plain for your average streetwear standard as well too that said however as I said before most of these pieces are decent it is Montclair once again, so the quality is definitely going to be on point. Hiroshi did a nice job of designing these pieces color-wise and style-wise without going too maximalized and too crazy as so many other luxury fashion houses have been doing nowadays. And overall, if you cut a zero off the back of every single one of these price tags, I would definitely be interested in it. But that's not going to happen anytime soon. So if you're maybe interested in seeing how he did or maybe just want to check out the first drop of the Montclair line, then I'd definitely check this out. Then Brand by Boar showed off their Spring Summer 2019 collection and I really do think this is amazing. As I've talked about before on this channel, by Boar is a textile design studio that obviously makes their own textiles in-house and in doing so is able to make some really fantastic and very technical pieces out of these designs that really make for some interesting clothes. And although a few seasons ago I still did feel like a couple of their textiles, their materials were a little bit too chunky at times, I still did feel that most of the designs were just diamonds in the rough waiting to be polished and over the course of the last couple of seasons they have been doing just that. And I really do think we see the culmination of the polishing they've been doing in this lookbook right here. The designs here are absolutely amazing. The aesthetic is truly unique and really only something that you see by Boar doing. And of course, how can I not talk about just these fantastic textiles, especially in this season with the inclusion of Gore-Tex, really just so stunning overall. Even if you're not a fan of more experimental engineered pieces or tech wear, I do highly recommend still checking out this collection just for inspiration's sake. Really, really fantastic job by Boar, and I really can't wait to see what the coming seasons of your brand brings. Then brand 3 Paradis showed off their Spring Summer 2019 lookbook, and although decent, there's something a little bit 
deeper I want to talk about here. Now for those of you who may remember earlier on this channel months back, I have talked very highly in very high regards about Three Pair of Beasts as a brand for a slew of reasons, be it their very interesting and experimental contemporary wear, their use of very intricate and interesting designs, and even some of the more aesthetic things they've been putting on their clothes, which really have blown me away. However, over the last two to three seasons, I've noticed a very worrying detail in their collections, and that's that all the collections are starting to look exactly the same. And really, I don't get what the problem is with so many of these contemporary brands. I mean, there's Three Paradise, The Incorporated had the same problem, and even Daily Paper, albeit more streetwear oriented of a brand, had this same problem as well too. And unfortunately, if Three Paradise just continues to keep this up, just like those other two brands, I'm gonna stop talking about this one as well too because it's starting to get pretty monotonous and I'm sorry to say, boring. However, if this is your introduction to Three Paradis, I wouldn't poo-poo it just yet. Take a look at this collection or better yet, take a look at their archive. Definitely some splendid pieces in there and I really do hope they get back on that track very soon. And lastly, Korean brand Issei showed off their Spring Summer 2019 lookbook, and I have to say, still consistently great overall. Now Issei, of course, one of the better techwear brands out there, and definitely by far one of the better Korean brands out there, showed me some really interesting things in their last collection by taking their really solid techwear and mixing it with some very nice, albeit minimalistic, contemporary pieces. And although we do get more of that here, we definitely see a return to what they know best, and that is, of course, their techwear inspirations. The tech pieces here are not overbearing, they fit in very well with their outfits, and do so without feeling too cyberpunk, if you know what I mean. Then the contemporary pieces make a return, and once again add a little bit of color, a little bit of pattern to this collection. And I just love the way that the tech pieces and the contemporary pieces, two completely different ideologies in fashion, kind of just dance around each other in this brand and do so, so effortlessly. So another fantastic job by Issei. I'm always interested in seeing what you guys have next. And if you are a fan of tech or contemporary pieces, definitely worth looking into. Okay guys, and last but not least, we have our articles for the day. And first up, Fast Company did a very interesting article on H&M's new attempt at pulling in new influencers. And how they're doing this is through collaborations and capsule collections. So instead of doing capsule collections or collaborations with famous designers or luxury houses, they're doing it with YouTubers and Instagram stars. And honestly, I think it's a fairly interesting idea, especially in such a world we live in where influencers are so huge nowadays and if this sounds interesting to you I definitely give this a read then Vogue did a very nice piece once again on the LVMH prize and they once again go into detail about it talking about just how important it is to fashion as a whole and even talk with some of the past winners and once again if you are new to this don't know what it's about I definitely read it I do think it's very important to fashion and I do think everybody should know about it and lastly, Hypey sat down with designer Martine Rose to talk about her eponymous label, specifically about what it takes to do a fashion show. And they kind of go through an interview slash overview of the build up to the show and then the show itself. Very interesting take on an interview and if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the fashion industry, especially what it takes to do a fashion show, 
definitely give this a read. All right, guys, and with that, we come to the end of our second and final whiff for the week. I hope you guys have enjoyed. And as always, if you want to read any of the articles I talked about today or see some of the photos I wasn't able to include from the lookbooks, I've linked everything in the description down below. And if you are new to the channel, then welcome. We do these What's Happening in Fashion videos twice a week, every Monday and Friday. So if you are a fan and want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, if you just have any questions or comments, concerns, or even just want to talk fashion at all, feel free to hit me up in the comments down below. I am always willing to talk fashion. And thank you guys once again for watching these videos and supporting my content. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and as always, until next time.